Crack up. <laughs> Um, so hi guys, I'm David John Watton, and um, I was the actor in the video. I'm Liam Foraker, I was the writer, director, and editor of the film. Daniel Robbins, I was the producer of Hound. My name's Izzy. I'm Zach. And uh, we're part of Woodlock, and um, we are the band behind the music. So we did the music composition, and we used my dog, Indy, for a lot of the filming in it as an actor. And my name's Bowen. I played drums for the band and I drove the ute and did the odd jobs maintenance <laughs> for the film. <laughs> I wanted to ask uh, Daniel a couple of questions first up. Um, can you tell us about how you came across Woodlock to begin with and how you ended up working together? How we ended up working on the film. So well, Liam came to me with um, the guys had put out a call out for filmmakers to produce a short film and um, they had obviously they had their parameters that we had to meet, but essentially it was just pitch us a short film and a short film idea. Um, Liam had an idea and he had pitched to them and then um, obviously had won that process um, to make this film. So that was how we ended up initially getting in touch with them. And then it sort of just developed from there. Do you remember what the, the parameters were for the film? So there was very minimal parameters. They obviously, um, the only things that we had to do were burn their van down um, and feature their song, Friends. Yeah. And is that kind of rare for it to be such a small amount of parameters to work with? Well, it's a bit different. Um, it was because it was a band, like usually if you get approached by a band or if you're pitching an idea for a, to a, for a band, it's usually just for a music video. Um, maybe there might be a bit of a concept that they already have for the song that they're trying to market or get out there. But um, it was a bit different them coming and saying that they wanted a short film, completely your own story, your own idea, um, make this film however you, whatever you, however you like. Obviously you had to pitch to them and that to like the idea, but um, basically do whatever you like and then we'll just see how we can make it work for us and implement their song into the film, which, um, which we did, so. You and Liam obviously have worked together before. Yeah, Liam and I went to film school together um, for years and we'd sort of, I think we'd finished the year before we did this film. Um, so that's how we knew each other and we'd worked on a few projects together. Um, so it wasn't, wasn't our first time working on something together from start to finish. So that was, it was good to collaborate again and then work with these guys for the first time. So how would you say working with Woodlock was? Are they, are they chilled out or... Were they stress heads? Like, how did it go? No, so well, we obviously hadn't worked with them before, so we didn't know what we were getting into or what, you know, was it going to be, is it more a music video? Was it more film? What did they um, what did they envision or what was their idea for the whole thing? But um, once we started working with them, yes, they were very chilled, very easy, relaxed guys. Um, they just, they loved the idea that Liam pitched them initially and it never really wavered from that. It was just, we love it, let's make it. And they were just on board straight away. So was fun really would you agree with that Liam yeah definitely very chilled and very fun um Daniel did you have a favorite moment or part of the film's creation that sticks out to you that you remember like obviously it's a little bit it was a while ago now so thinking back to when it was made um do you have a moment that sticks out to you that was a fave yeah two two years ago almost was it two years ago did we shoot it in August it was yeah, a long time ago. The world's changed a fair bit since we did this. But um, so I think my favourite part of it, which is usually the same on every shoot, is the actual shoot. So being out on location, um, in the field, in Tungama, um, and shooting the shooting it over that weekend, staying at the Tungama Hotel, um, being catered out of a caravan near the rock quarry over behind the field. Um, but just being on set and making it with everybody is usually the best part it was a pretty cool it was a really fun shoot to be on there was a lot of logistics that we had to get around obviously we shot it in one location which was you know seemingly is an easy thing to do but um obviously we had a lot of people and we had an animal on set which people say don't shoot films with animals um but we had Indy and it was and she was fantastic um and then we had to burn a caravan down I remember on set there was um, some interested locals uh, when you were burning down the caravan. Um, 
yeah, that obviously Tonga is a really small place. So they were very keen you, on it. They're very keen on it. Yes. Yeah, just a little bit like something interesting happens and everyone kind of pops their head out, which is really fun. I'd love to know more about the story of the hound and how that came about. So maybe Liam, we could jump to you and talk a little bit about, um, yeah, the story and when you pitched it to Woodlock and um, before Daniel said it didn't change much, but I'd love to hear from your perspective, how you came up with the story. I think the story was inspired a lot by the band. They sort of sent out a basic like pitch document with what they wanted to include and what they were looking for. And, you know, in the early stages, we talked a lot about like the themes of, isolation and new beginnings i think that was the main idea that came across when we wanted to burn the caravan down which was you know one of the main points they wanted to do so i think that served as a really big idea for new beginnings and it was like a bit of an honorable trope to burn it down so i think that's the sort of pathway we wanted to go down and then there was like the isolation factor which came into play which i think was in contrast with the writing process of the album where, you know, we sort of talk about the band locking themselves away and like focusing on this new creative venture and, you know, starting this new journey. So I think that's sort of both the themes that we wanted to try inject into the story. And I think we we did achieve that. So at the kind of at the end of the film, what did you feel like you wanted the viewer to get out of it? Um, so it's, it's an open ending um, of the film. So I'd like the audience to sort of take away what they will from it sort of let them come up with their own conclusion and then go go with it from that. I think it, it's a lot more hard hitting if, if the audience can put two and two together and sort of create their own narrative. I love that. Um, and you worked for, you worked with the look for Feel It Coming as well. Yeah, that was good. So we sort of got to get everyone back together after a while. Dan was there, he produced it and we had a cinematographer, Shahid, who did an amazing job for both projects. And, um, you know, from their new album, there were so many good songs on it. Would have loved to do a music video for any. And Feel It Coming was an awesome track. It was so high energy and really had a a lot of creativity behind it. So they sort of had the main idea again, which uh, we got to collaborate together with and sort of work out what we wanted to do with it, which is awesome because, you know, the band is really creative they have so many ideas they want to shoot out and really enjoy the whole process which is fun you can see they really have like an eye for cinema and you know what they want to express on screen through their song so it was really good getting everyone together again and working together thank you so much um i'm as um daniel mentioned earlier working with animals is tricky um david i'd love from your perspective what was it like to work with indy oh it's great Do you know what um like, I love dogs. I've always had dogs. And dogs, like, they don't have any regrets, you know? They're not sad for things that haven't happened yet. And, like, there's something about, there's just something really inspiring about them um, spiritually to be around, you know? Like, dogs just do what they do. And it's sort of like, it's a really watchable quality. Like, um, one of the things as an actor you try and do is, like, have a sense of spontaneity and, like, um, you know, you can, you, you prep, prep, and prep your, like, character and, you know, the bi biography sides and all of that. But I think, you know, in life as well as acting, you don't know what's gonna happen until you walk through a door, right? Like you can prepare as much as you want, but um, it's a really watchable quality to exist just in the moment and, and just let things happen to you. Like that's really watchable on screen. That's what I always try and do. And I think that's what makes um, any performance good. And like dogs are like the ultimate example of that. <laughs> like dogs just are in the moment all the time. They don't. They don't sit there on a night and go, man, I wish I'd moved to Rome five years ago, like I do, you know? Um, so it was just cool. You just never know what, what she's going to do. She was so good. I mean, so good uh, in, in the movie. And yeah, it's, it's a wonderful experience. I actually prefer working with dogs and actors. I love that so much. That's beautiful. Um, so what kind of was your favourite scene, I guess, to bring to life? Were there any moments that stuck out to you in the filming that you really loved creating? For me, that one? Yeah. I was thinking about this. Actually, my favorite moments um, of the whole shoot was like shooting's intense, right? Like it's it's emotionally, it spits you out. Like you come out as a real um, brotherhood afterwards. You feel like you've been to war together. You know, it's just such early mornings and like such an intense experience. And um, emotionally, it kind of tears you apart. And it's just a really 
beautiful thing to do. And um, I think we were pretty much at the arse end of like the last day. And we were about to burn the caravan down. A huge storm came in. We all locked ourselves in the caravan to get out of it, thinking, how is this going to like play with a, um, you know, the, the big fire scene? And um, I think we're having some lunch with this sort of view of the, the fields and the caravans down there and Indies around. And I was chatting to Boyden and um, I hadn't actually heard the song uh, in, in full yet. So we jumped into the car and um, Boyden and I sat there and put the tune on and it was just wonderful. I was like, man, I'm not gonna forget this moment in a hurry. This is incredible. You know, it's such an incredible song. And yeah, just as like a moment for the, it was really beautiful. Um, but in terms of scenes, like, you know, blowing up caravans, cool, can't argue with that. <laughs> Yeah, that was incredible to witness. Um, Bowen, do you remember that moment with David sitting in the car listening to Friends? Yeah, no, it was awesome. It was just, it, it was one of those, like, you know, those pauses, those little breaks where you get to um, wait it out, you know, while the production guys do it and things. And I'm like, man, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta hear it. You gotta hear this song. <laughs> awesome. Um, David, did you see any of yourself in the character you played in the film? <laughs> uh, um... Like ninety five percent, like a lot. Um, it's very different acting on stage to screen. Like stage, you know, it's a huge room, so you've got to be more like, "I'm sad, guys. Can you see that at the back? Like, you know, I love you." Um, but the screen's so close up; it's like the camera just looks into your soul. And um, I think you look at the script and. and there's so much humanity already in it, um, but I think you just have to build maybe a little bit of biographical stuff that's, you know, unique to that guy. Um, but kind of what I was saying before, you know, if you sort of, you just prepare that stuff, you, you sort of decide on what his relationship was with his dad and does he have kids and, and um, you know, work out what's happened up to that moment. But I think when you arrive, you know, in the car, then just let it happen, see what happens. Like, um, you know, I, yeah, yeah. I, I wonder how much you're seeing me and how much you're seeing that guy. Uh, I never really know where that, that works, but I think, um, I think any actor would say that in any part they ever do ever, it's about 98% them. Maybe you tweak up a few things and a few things down, but yeah. Love that. Um, I would love to know from the band, the story behind the caravan because obviously that was really important for you guys to have in the film so kind of what sparked the idea to make the film and also what's your relationship with the caravan oh so basically yeah the caravan it was um it was bouncing around the family for about 200 bucks and uh the boys mentioned that there was um you know well we're going to go on a road trip and as soon as i as soon as i heard zach say that oh bone do you want to go on a road trip and um, I'm like, we're doing it in this caravan. So we did it up and we traveled around Australia. And that's sort of how we started as a band and um, had many good memories in there, went to festivals in it. And um, we, yeah, we went on tour again with it. And, um, we had heaps of fun. And, and then we ended up uh, leaving it in um, our hometown. And uh, we, it sort of, it got a little bit, uh, let's just say, um, a little bit used. Well used. Well used. <laughs> well used. We um, actually, we we had a I had a, a a mate who sort of fell on hard times, and he um he he used it um for a little bit. Or well, he actually I found him. I was back in our hometown for a little second, and I, I um I noticed that he actually slept underneath it that night, and then I was like, oh dude, do you need a place to stay? Do you, you know? And um, and so we let him stay and sleep in the caravan and um and he's actually doing really well and he's on his feet and it's awesome so it's a very good it's a, a very positive story and um after after that we're like well what are we going to do with this caravan because we didn't necessarily want to go touring in it again and um yeah we just thought let's immortalize it because i'm the like at least this is i'm the type of person who i can't like sell it because i'd always want it back <laughs> Because and um because it's so emotionally like I'm emotionally attached to it because we've had so much fun in it. Yeah. So we had to sort of immortalize it in art. So we wanted it to um immortalize it in the album cover and also give 
like a great platform for an independent short film. I think Bond's really, he's uh, really put it well. It's like, you know, that caravan was really like, it was, it's a huge symbol of particularly our beginnings and sort of like the birth of what we are now. But yeah, um, during the album recording process, I can remember going, I can remember saying during the recording, like, hey guys, for the album cover, we should burn the caravan. I can remember Bond going, hell no. I can remember... <laughs> I remember Bone being really, really just adamant to not burn it. And it took three years to get him to come around. And it was worth it. So, yeah, I think I'm um, like Bone was saying before about it being a bit of a platform. So, you know, we had all these ideas on what we wanted to do with it. And basically, it was at a point where you couldn't really live in it. It was pretty roughed up because it had a few dogs living in it. So it was, I mean, it was pretty rough to live in it when we lived in it. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> yeah, a couple of years of, you know, five dogs living in it. It was just a little bit too beyond repair. So we wanted to do something with it. And, you know, we had the idea of, of flaming it and doing a nice photo and doing something that we could always remember. And then we, I don't remember how it came across, but we were um, chatting amongst us and we sort of had this idea like, you know, this would be a great opportunity to maybe put a film together. And me and Zach have always wanted to do, you know, music uh, composition and have loved writing music. Our music's very... Cinematic, uh, cinematic and and that's always been something we've loved to do and we're like this would be a great uh, opportunity to do it so yeah we ended up just putting a little thing out there for uh any you know people that want to sort of get involved on this you know write up some ideas this is the things that need to happen the caravan needs to be set on fire you know we we need to be able to get some good photos of it and you know what's some stories that we can build up around that you know we had a quarry we had an area where we could do it that was on some friend's farmland where it could be safe and done properly you know there's we even had like a fire fire crew out there that were ready on standby but um yeah it was really good uh opportunity for us to be like it's something we always like to see and just to see how it was all done on a film it's different to do a music video music videos are very like i don't know you go in there you do it you know everyone's trying to show a good vibe and be like, yeah, you know, cause you're trying to vibe on the song. It was so much nicer to be there for, a, for the film mm. and um, get to see how they all do their thing and all the people behind it. And, you know, all the heavy weights and things that people have to carry in film. And yeah, it was, a, it was a great experience for us to just see how that sort of area goes, you know, get a mm. peek behind the veil. That's something we never get to see. Yeah. I, I was actually very, very <coughs> impressed with the, uh, the work ethic of the crew and the team. That's true. It was also like, to, to see behind the curtain on what goes on in a, in a set, like, um, yeah, production was incredible. Do you have any favourite memories of that caravan that stick out to you from touring or anything that you, you think Sorry. back and you're like, <laughs> or bad memories? I don't know. <laughs> All right. Um, I have a specific memory. Uh, I think it was my 22nd birthday and um, we were – We'd driven on the actual day of my birthday and then we'd parked up in, uh, I think it was Tamworth. Tamworth, yeah. And so, and so we thought, we thought it'd be this brilliant idea to, to make the caravan like, would have a poker night in the caravan and would have cigars in the caravan, you know, get, get that nice, that cigar smoke in the top, you know, just really get it looking nice. And it was, it smelled like bloody cigars for like three weeks. We had to sleep, sleep in this like cigar, like it stank. It wasn't like this pleasant, smell it was it reeked it was so bad and three weeks we had to spend sleeping in this thing just stinking stinking of bloody cigars but uh, that, i remember that mem- and i remember the next day after that night uh we we went out and we bust and i remember we didn't play well because we were all super hungover from that from the night before it was yeah a lot of really good memories all right i've got a great one this one's more of the scene of when we were in that caravan in life and basically we had the idea of <clears throat> we were going to see how far we could get around Australia just by doing street performance and using the coins we made for food and for petrol and for the odd, um, you know, if we made enough, we could get maybe get a slab of beer or something like that, or, yeah. you know, have a, have a fun time. And that's sort of where we were at. So, you know, we all locked out bank accounts and we only had this certain amount that was emergency money, which we never ended up touching, but, um, you know, we went out and did the thing. And so one of the big things you don't realize is money. You know, when your parents buy your food and you're used to having like, you know, salad sandwiches made for you, delivered to your room. <laughs> and then you got to realize you got to make your own lunches. We, I never realized how expensive it was. So we, I, we invented a food where we would get Devin, 
which is like a luncheon. So we do Devon, which was like super cheap. We'd mix it with cheese, you know, maybe chuck like a carrot, just grate a carrot into it and some more cheese, some more Devon. And then we just make it into a big omelet and it looked and smelled like spew, but it tasted good. So we called it good spew. And yeah. so we spent a lot of the times on the road where if we had a really bad day, we're just like, man, boy, let's get the good spew out. And so we just eat the spewy, stinky looking stuff. And that's the big thing I remember about it. It was rank. I don't remember it tasting good at all. The second time it didn't taste good. Nah. First time wasn't too bad. I think we were oh, just hungry, gosh. yeah. Yeah, I think so. I actually, oh, there's a few good memories in it. Like going to a festival in it was great because you had cold cold beers straight out of the fridge. That was, yeah, a good little setup with the Winterbourne Boys. The Winterbourne Boys always crushed over in it, actually, which was awesome. Mm. And um, But I, this one particular one, I can't remember who snuck out, but um, we, 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 we this morning we were just like everyone was sort of sleeping in and then um, someone snuck out and um, started driving while we were all in the caravan. And it was all just like shaking. And then it was only slow. And I was just like, oh, wow, it's like an earthquake in here. What's going on? So that was a good little memory. Not very legal. That's awesome. Thank you so much. Um, I also loved hearing about the difference between making a film versus making a music video. Does anyone have anything to add on that? Some experience or, you know, what, what the difference was between the two? I kind of wish we had been a lot more a part of the film aspect because um, it's because it's done over quite a few more days. I could notice people were really kind of locking in and there were people kind of chatting and making friends. And um, I think over the longer period, I can see the seriousness of it, but it's more, um, I guess, camaraderie, like people are working together and I don't know, maybe like similar, like when people are on camp and like everyone's locking into their certain thing they do and, you know, they're getting up early and having their breakfasts together and all that stuff. So I really enjoyed visually seeing the um, just people kind of chatting together and, and having fun and, and making a film and seeing a lot of people that are passionate about whatever their um, thing was. Cause I could, I don't actually know, but I vibe everyone sort of was specializing in their thing and they took it very seriously and was very passionate about it you know you think of film you think oh direct a producer or whatever but there was you know there were people that were holding the the shiners and there was someone that was like doing the special focuses a special way to make it all so it would it would look right and show faces properly and yeah it, it, seeing the different aspects you know even something like film grading didn't really know much about that and seeing the difference to how when we were visually there seeing it to then seeing how it came up on the film and it gave a real nice sort of dramatic tone to when you saw it and it was like yeah it was pretty pretty magical yeah. to watch i i feel like it helped us really develop an appreciation for like not just the like not just the things you see at face value but just the um yeah just the entire process and i think mm. and, it, and it was definitely and the entire process was much more noticeable in the film in the in you know in the, in the short filming as opposed to the music video. It, like, it's not that you couldn't notice in the music video, it's just that, yeah, again, shorter period of time, so you don't notice as much of the um, that stuff. And it's just very, very interesting to see. And it's interesting to see the similarities between, say, for us, like producing an album and for the and producing short films. And just like, even though like the, even though one's for visual and one's for audio, like just seeing the actual, the, the similarities and like the rule sets, you know, for us, like, you know, coloring would be like, uh, uh, coloring or uh, grading a film would be the same as mastering it and an album and stuff like that and just seeing the similar similarities and like just as much hard work which was, was really really cool yeah it sounds like you really got a got an appreciation for mm. filmmaking that you didn't really have before mm. um i'd love to know what made you guys pick the pitch for the hound over other submissions that you may have gotten I think one of the main one was when they were talking about it is uh it sparked into for me so indy the the dog filmed in it is or was my dog. And um, uh, that was sort of what sparked it for me in the way of um, keeping it something that's sort of super different um, and things we could add into, you know, quietly between, you know, seeing it, I was like, oh, I have a dog yeah. and she's quite pretty and looks like a wolf and, you know. But um, I think uh, the, yeah, that was sort of what got me definitely involved into it. I remember reading through a couple of them and, you know, that's not like they were bad or anything like that, but none of them really stuck with the idea that we were sort of going for. 
I think um, it was really the storytelling. Like we got pictures for um, dances and all that yeah. kind of stuff. But then when we read the Hound, like there was a real strong storytelling aspect, which for anybody who listens to our music, I feel yeah. I feel like our our for us, like we delve into lots of different styles, but storytelling has always been a an extreme like a like an anchor for what we do. And so seeing that <coughs> seeing that storytelling was really a was really sort of the uh, pulling point, at least for me. Hmm. Izzy, can you tell us a little bit more about the Hound and how Indy became part of the film? Yeah, so basically, I think she was maybe, she was quite little, young at the time, maybe eight months or something. She, I don't even think she was quite a year old. So she was going really through her naughty phase. And so every part of the film you see her in, I'll be somewhere around there hidden with like literally a, a bag of chicken in my hand, like just got a warm chicken trying to make her come back to me. And I do remember a lot of the time she kept going, jumping in the lake because there were ducks in the lake so we're trying to like you know make it look nice and she'd be like oh yeah you know getting into it and be like duck boom jump in the lake you have to dry her up and try and make it and good wash, again, all but, um, it'll wash all the blood off yeah <laughs> kept washing the blood off and then and then she yeah but i mean she did enjoy the chicken and she did a great job and it's not it's awesome to see a dog be a dog and um you know she's running around and saying hi to everyone and and doing her thing and um it, it was definitely, I'm so glad I did it at the time because, you know, years down, she ended up getting quite sick and actually passed away maybe uh, five months ago and she was quite young. And um, at the time, it's funny that, uh, you know, I, I'm so glad that she gets to be, you know, immortalised in a film and I can enjoy this, you know, down the track and, you know. Um, it's, yeah, it was one of those special moments where... Uh, Didn't realise how special it was until nah, later on, yeah. I mean, I, I knew it was going to be good, you know, and... Um, it's just a nice thing. Dogs are an awesome, uh, they're an awesome animal. There's a reason they're man's best friend. And um, I'm so glad that I have the film that I can sort of back up on. And I'm um, 10 years time when I have enough, less emotion into it, that I can watch it and not get teary eyed. But um, yeah, eventually I'll watch it. <clears throat> Beautiful. Well, on a lighter note, I'd love to know just from anyone um, what your favourite moments were behind the scenes potentially or like I remember afterwards like we all kind of surround the fire and had a drink or things like that. Like are there any moments like that stick out to you that you really loved? I got a great one. It was when things were getting up when we were trying to figure out how we were going to burn the caravan. And um, uh, I had this idea in my head because I was trying to think of how we could make it look massive and blow out the top so we built this like little um, lot. We put lots of wood in the in the middle of it and made like a tee, TP like a TP looking thing. And then I popped the top little um, air vent thing to try and make like an air drift so it would blow out the top. And then um, we put it lots of fuel in into it. And then there is there was this kind of weird moment where where it was like, who, who's gonna who's actually gonna do it? Who's gonna light it? Like because it was a lot. We definitely used way too much <laughs> fuel. Fuel, and um. I don't remember who ended up doing it. it. I remember there was like there was like a fishing sure line or something. You did. Like there was like a little like we lit something to like flick in there to try it. and then like we light the fire, and then David had to like run in front of it and be like walk away from it. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was so good. That was probably my favorite part. It's like the, and the arguing. I'm like it's not gonna blow up the way you think. It's gonna. <laughs> like, yeah. And then it ended up surprisingly like, hard there in it, man. I thought it would be like apocalypse. Oh, like I thought yeah. I put a thing in it. <laughs> like, yeah. Pure Vin Diesel, but um, man, man, like you drop the thing and it's like, well, that just looks like a little tiny piece of fire. How do we make it fucker explode? This film might not get quite the effect we're looking for. <laughs> I think between that one and um, we didn't think to pop the wheels. Yeah, we didn't think to pop the wheels, and so midway through it going, it was just like bang, bang, two of the wheels popping. I remember that. We felt pretty confident because we had the CFA parked over on the side, so you could put as much fuel as you want because they were so keen to. They kind of wanted it to a little bit out of control, so they had something to do. Yeah. All of New America was there watching. <laughs> Tungama. Uh, I mean, Tungama. So both, no, both places. That, you know, people from Tungama, Tungama were there. Called, called up New America and like, hey. Had to make them move their cars so they wouldn't be in the film shot. Like, yeah, oh, parked right crack. behind the van on the horizon. Like the whole <laughs> town parked. There's like 20 cars parked on the road behind where it's so when you watch the film, the last, the last shot of David with the van, then up behind him at the end of the field is, this, is a road. And it was like the whole town parked their cars up there five minutes before we're about to throw the, throw the match. We had to get them all to move their cars and park somewhere else. And they're yeah. all just 
they kept out they were apparently asking we stayed at the hotel and apparently there were people were asking them all day what time are they what time's the fire starting what time <laughs> what time's the bonfire yeah. so it's, it's, people should treat, i bring people what treat like the byo yeah people treat like as a family outing like you saw them they had their eskies out like you know, people would bring their camp chairs <laughs> It was really, really fun. Even my dad drove out there in his little Ford Festiva thing and was doing little doughies in the grass field. And I was like, yo, dad, pull back. Like, I want to just know a little bit about this Tungamar Hotel, you know? Mm. What, oh, yeah. what, what was the experience Tungamar. there? Liam yeah. and David and Daniel? Oh, yeah, he's wearing the hoodie. Um, got, the ho- got the Tungamar hoodie. Yeah. <laughs> hey, there you go. <laughs> uh, it was a fun place. It was supposed to be haunted. That's what, something we found out while staying there, but... I think one of the one of the funniest things that happened while we were there was we had all the gear upstairs and because we were staying there overnight, the morning that we were supposed to shoot, we sort of um, I think it was a weekend, so we woke up pretty early, and um, we were getting ready to load gear downstairs because we were staying upstairs, and it seemed like one of the patrons from the night before had sort of not made it home, sort of spent the night on the stairs. <laughs> <laughs> He was all right. He was just a bit, I think, <laughs> drunk and a bit passed out. So <laughs> that like 6 a.m. or loading gear over this <laughs> drunk, passed out guy on the stairs. And that was a, just a really fun way to start the day. He didn't move either. <laughs> <laughs> we spent, it took us about 20 minutes to get all our gear from upstairs, downstairs into the van, up and down, up and down and over him. Um, <laughs> we, were, we were loud. We were laughing. Um, and he didn't budge. And he was still there when we left. He's still there today. <laughs> Where it has it. There's someone who haunts the stairs. How many people were on the crew? Oh, there's a there's about ten of us, I think. Um, it was a decent it was a decent crew. And like you talk about what you know, camaraderie and all that. Um, a lot of them hadn't met each other. There was a lot of sort of new people that we'd all worked with on different projects, but never together. So not everybody had met before. So um, there's always the nerves of, you know, is it going to, are we going to gel? Is it going to be cohesive? Is it going to work? And it was, it's like we everyone had known each other for forever and we only worked together for like three days. So um, it was an awesome shoot to be a part of. Um, and then the guys came and Indy being there, like as soon as there's a dog on set, the crew yeah. is happy and in love, you know, and just doing anything. So it was, sort of a fun group to be part of because it just depends what the concept is. Some short films can be high concept and they might take a long time to, to shoot. Um, I think the, the difference with a short film, not, not all the time, but you know, music video is purely visual in terms of what your, what the production is trying to achieve. You've already got the song, you've already got the music. Um, so you're just trying to come up with the visuals to match and enhance the song. Um, whereas the short film, you're really focused on the story and, um, the character and the visuals are important, but it's there's a lot more to it than just what it looks like. So that's really the main difference that I could describe. Um, in terms of, so when we, we had, there was a lot of logistics involved in burning the van down and shooting a film and trying to get publicity stills. There was a lot going on in that last little period. So it was easy to get lost in, right, David, do this, camera, go there, light the van, get the shot, go to the back, get the shot from the side, get the shot from the back, quick, everyone get in, get the photos. Like it was a real, um, it was really intense that last hour and it had come off. We'd had this massive storm cell blow through and just wipe us out for half an hour. Um, so we had this really intense moment at the end where everyone was just focused on what we had to do and get, get the film done. Um, and then we sort of, once we we sort of looked at Liam and said, I think, is that, is that every shot that you needed? Have you got all your photos? And everyone was like, yeah, no, I think we're done. And then we had like this really awesome sort of half hour together of just the crew and the band and their friends. And we all just sort of stood around the caravan, like stood around the bonfire for a little bit. And we were like, it's done. That's it. And just watched sure. it sort of burn to the ground. It was just a lovely sort of, and we got to sort of let go of the tension of make the film and then just enjoy the, the smoldering wreck that we I think it only yeah. went for like 13 minutes too. I don't remember it. Oh, so I remember it didn't take long for it to catch and then burn up. Very quick. Yeah, it was super quick. 
was really didn't nice. think it was going to be quick at first. No, but... I remember being like, oh, 30 minutes. <laughs> but yeah, it was like <laughs> it was like 13 minutes, I reckon. Also, right, guys, catch you later. Cheers. Be careful, Thanks. Thanks. See ya. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Catch you.